Hello and welcome back to the Stoneburner Books YouTube channel. Today I am going to show you how to make these bindings. This is called a Japanese stab binding and specifically it's the noble binding. There are multiple different kinds of um, stitches that you can do, but this one, the square pattern is called the noble binding. So if you would like to prepare your materials, I did all of the prep work or a bulk of the prep work in a live stream and I will link that here. Um, so if you want to prepare your materials, go watch that and then come back to this um, because we're going to kind of jump right in. I'm going to, these are my examples. So the basic structure is, it is cover paper these covers are folded in half and then single sheets of paper so this if you can see here on the edge these are all individual single sheets so this is a great binding um, because it does not involve any glue and it can take single sheets and bring them together as one instead of having to have a larger piece of paper and fold it in half and then sew through that binding. So um, this is great for certain types of projects that you might be doing and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So on the live stream, what we did was we prepared our cover paper and our pages. So I have already taken a little bit of time to punch some holes in a bulk of my paper, but what I um, am going to do first is show you my template. These are my pages for my covers up here, and I have a template that I've already made. Um, one thing I like about making a template is if it's your first time ever doing this type of binding, you can um, make your template and you can actually sew through it to practice your binding. Um, but if you've done this before or if you just want to go ahead and dive right in on the very first um, time that you're making it, you can just use it to punch all your holes in your pages and in your covers. So this is an example of a different template that I made. And I like also to have a, a template of each different stitch that I have that I do. Um, that way, if it's been a little while since the last time I made my this type of binding, I can take a look at it and just remember, oh, okay, I need this many holes and this is how the spacing is and this is how you know the back of it looks. So this is my template that's all stitched up. And this is my pre-made template, <laughs> but uh, this is, I'm gonna show you how to make this template. So aside from your pages, which I'm just using a regular text weight paper, um, and then the cover paper, this is a handmade paper. Um, you can see there, it's not washi paper. Washi is um, often used for the covers. Um, but I'm going to show you another stitch in the Japanese stab binding kind of realm um, in a future tutorial. And that one I am just using, um, I've actually already prepped my pages for it. It's right here off camera. Um, and I'm just using a regular cardstock um, weight paper. So you can use a variety of things. The main thing to know is um, where, that you want your grain direction going along the fold. So um, that way you have nice clean folded edges. Um, okay, so we have our pages that are regular text weight. We have our covers. And then for the templates, I'm just using a cardstock weight paper. And my measurements for my pages are, let's see, four and a half inches high. And that means that my covers are also going to be four and a half inches high. And my template is four and a half inches high. So I'm going to move a few things around here so you can see what I'm doing with my template. Okay, so we know that we can just double check that Yep, this template's four and a half inches high. And for this one, so I'll show you on my other template, because this is a much taller um, book than this one, I made sure that I did a one inch border sitting in. Um, but because this one's a little bit smaller, I actually am making all of my stitching go on um, at three quarters of an inch in. If you look at how it's on my um, 
grid here, you can see this is a half inch, and so it's right on the three quarter inch line. Now, this is a matter of personal preference. Um, you can see that on this one, I did bring it in for a full inch. It's just kind of a personal preference because if you have it coming in a full inch, then it's going to be less here. And also, you know, the book will only open up this much. So that's just something to consider. If you scooch it back to three quarters of an inch, it gives you a little bit more page um, to work with. Okay, so for this one, I am going to do the first thing I'm going to do is mark off three quarters of an inch. Just draw a line going across here okay and then I am going to make five holes nice and even along this line so let me just see what these all these look like they are three quarters of an inch spaced out evenly so that's what we're gonna do we are gonna mark Get all the space here. We're going to take our ruler and line it up right on that line and mark off every three quarters of an inch. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Perfect. Now, the one kind of specialty tool that you'll want for this, or well, I recommend this one. You could do it with an awl, but this is a small, I believe it's a 16th of an inch um, hole punch. And I highly recommend having a hole punch for this because as you can see on here, you have to run the thread through the hole multiple times and it's coming in and out multiple times. So you want to make sure that your holes have enough space for your needle and your thread to go through multiple times. Um, so I highly recommend using a hole punch to make your holes both in your template and in your pages. So like I said, you can do it with an awl. Okay, let's see if I can get this on camera and I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm just lining up and eyeballing that little tick mark um, with the piece that is going to punch through. Let's see if you can see that. So um, just going really slowly and making sure that it's hitting right where that those two lines intersect. And then I've got my hole. Um, so just I'm going to do that for all of them. One, it's kind of faster and less wear and tear on your hands than using an awl. Um, but again, having the, sometimes with an awl, you're pushing those pages, you're not clearing out the paper from the hole like you are with a hole punch. You're actually removing that. Um, and with an awl, sometimes you're just pushing it and it kind of goes to the side and that can get in the way down the road. So um, now that we have our template, I am going to take my pages. This is just, again, a couple sheets of paper um, at a time. Let's see, this is just three sheets of paper and it's a real nice thin text weight paper. If this is your first time doing this binding, I would recommend working with a nice thin paper just to get the hang of it and make things easier on yourself. So all I did was put a little um, pencil dot in between in each hole. And so I'm gonna just do the exact same thing I did with the template, just kind of get everything lined up and then punch my holes through. Okay, so those are the last of my pages. I'm gonna kind of get them all put together with my other pages. I think I might have flipped these upside down. I always try to keep them in order of which way. Nope, that was definitely the right way. Um, I try to keep them in order of how I punch them. And then if you need to, if your pages kind of get out of line, what you can do is take your needle. We're going to use a straight needle for this binding. You can take your needle and kind of put it through the hole and just get everything lined up again. If it's helpful, you could also use a small clamp 
like this little tiny clothespin to hold your pages together while you're sewing. Okay, so I'm gonna set these to the side for a second and I'm gonna deal with my cover papers. So in the live stream that I linked at the beginning, and I'll link that down in the description box as well, I tell you all the, di the dimensions for all of these pages, um, but the one thing that you want for this is a double width. It's gonna be the exact same height as your pages, but a double width so that you can fold it and just put the short edges together so that you can make a nice like thicker cover with a nice little edge there. So that's all you're doing, folding these in half. Okay, and then you'll just wanna take a look and see which one you want to be your front cover and which one do you want to be your back cover. This paper is handmade, so it does have some like little blemishes here and there. Um, just naturally. So just taking a look at that. And then we'll just nest our pages in there as well to take a look at it. And that way you can see here, I made my covers just a tad longer than my pages just to give it a little extra protection. But again, those the tops and bottoms all fit together because you're going to need them to be all the same height because you're gonna have um, thread that wraps around on both top and bottom. Okay, so now we have our covers, but we wanna make sure that we get our um, covers and our pages lined up. Now, I just realized something that I actually made my original pages with my original template. So I'm gonna, for consistency sake, I am going to use my first template to punch the covers, um, the holes in the cover, because I wanna make sure that everything lines up with my original pages. So let me use this one, but if I had made, if I had waited and punched all of my pages with this, I would have used this template. So that's just why you'll see I'm switching colors. Now, I wanna make sure that I'm keeping everything kind of in order, because I don't want stuff to flip and then the spacing to be off. So I'm keeping this as a mem uh, you know, in my mind that it's a front cover. I'm just gonna get it all nice and centered. And again, just put my little marks here. It might be a little bit harder to see the pencil marks. Let's see what we can do here. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> really hard to see. Uh, but I think if I just kind of look at it closely i probably you probably can't see them here on the camera but i can see them in real life um, if you ever have a problem where you can't see the marks that you've made you could also just put your template down and um, flat on the top of the paper and then instead of using a pencil to mark it you could use an awl to poke the first hole and then clean it up with your um, hole puncher. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that right on top there, and then I'm gonna pull the bottom piece out. And again, just keeping my template lined up in the same direction. It's not the end of the world if stuff gets out of sorts, but it does make life and sewing this a lot easier if everything is kind of punched in the exact same place. That's how you can get everything lined up really nicely, all your edges of your pages lined up really nicely. And um, it just makes sewing easier because all of the holes are in the exact right spot. You're not having some holes going through this way and some going through, you know, just slightly off. So some of them are a little bit smaller. Um, it's helpful. All right, now I cannot see this last hole. So I'm gonna show you what I would do. So you can see that everything is punched through except for that last one here with the gold. So I'm gonna have, now that I can see everything is lined up, I'm just gonna put this down. I'm gonna get my awl 
and I'm just going to poke through right there in the center because that's going to be a lot easier for me to see than a gray pencil line. So now I can see where that is, but you can, this is actually a great way to show you that hole is so much smaller than this one. So imagine getting your needle and thread through that hole three times versus this hole. That's why I like to use a hole punch on it. Okay. So now we have our whole book. And again, if you want to find my needle, if you want to get your um, pages and covers all in alignment, just taking your needle and wiggling it through the holes to just kind of make sure that the pathway is clear there. That's really helpful. And I think what I'm going to do is use one of my little um, clothespins there, paper clips, so that I can set this down and know that it's not going to come out of alignment. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is measure out our thread for this. I'm going to be using a um, waxed linen thread, and you want to have four times the height of the book. So when I'm measuring, I always measure a little bit more on each side. So this is this much, which is really an inch extra on both top and bottom. This is what I call one height of the book. Um, I like to always have more thread than not enough. And especially for this type of binding, it is a little bit hard to hide it if you need to um, add thread. There's not a great spot to put a knot and add more length. You can, but it, it'll be visible. So I'm just using a, a basic straight needle. Um, these are bookbinders needles, but you can use regular items. So the next step is we are going to get sewing. All right, now that you have all of your materials and you have your needle threaded, you want to start from the back of the book and sew through that top hole. And when you start, you want to leave a little tail because we are going to come back and tie our knot. And so you could either tuck your tail, I'm going to tuck this little extra right in underneath my clothespin so that I can keep some tension on there and not have to worry about accidentally pulling it through. Okay, so the first step is to loop your thread around and then come in again through the back. And don't worry if it's not tight right at the start. What we're going to do is just kind of do the loop loosely and then make sure that it's in alignment and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, so you can see it, I'm not tight, making it too tight. Also, I don't want to pull super hard on this first one because I don't want to pull this tail end out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edge of the book. So same thing, pulling the thread back this way and then I'm going to go in from the back. and sew to the front. Again, just doing it loosely and then kind of tightening it once I can see that this is a straight line across. So the next thing I wanna do is go straight down to the next station, the next hole, and go from the front into the back. This stitch, you're going to kind of work your way um, alternating down so you'll see what I mean in a second. So we have a straight line down. We're now going to wrap from the back side. We're going to wrap around and we're going to go through the front this time. So again, just doing it loosely and then tightening it up once you've got it in the straight position. Okay, so now our th needle is on the back side here. We have a space open here, which is fine because we're going to come and cover that on our um, final <laughs> descent. Basically, you sew down and then you come back and sew up and then tie your knot here at the top. So that's where we're going with this. <laughs> um, so now that our needle is on the back, we're going to do a straight stitch down to our next station. Okay, now that our needle's on the front, we're just going to wrap it around the edge again and go in through the back of that same hole. Okay. 
Okay, you can see how when I'm sewing it, it's kind of going, it's not naturally going to go exactly perfectly straight. So that's again why I'm doing it loosely at first and then um, tightening it up. So you'll see we've got a, a gap here. Don't worry about that. We're going to go down to this next hole down and our needle's on the front. So we're going to go from the front to the back. Okay, and again, just bringing that thread from the back to the front, and then we're going to put our needle through that front hole one more time. And again, you can see, it doesn't naturally want to go straight, so just go slow and tighten it as you go. Okay, so now our needle is on the back. You can see we've got some empty spaces here. Still totally fine, totally normal. We're going to go in from the back to the front on that final hole. And we're going to treat it just like how we did. Now look, this is one thing about using these is that your loose ends will get caught on that. So again, it's a good reason to go slow. <laughs> um, what I was saying is we're going to do the same thing at this corner that we did up here where we're going to wrap around the bottom and we're going to wrap around the side. It does not matter which one you do first. Um, I think I'm going to wrap around the side first. But again, just going through from the back to the front. And then from the, um, we're going to wrap around the bottom again, still going into the, from the back to the front. Okay. So now we have all of the major stitching on the top and the side, top, bottom and sides done, but we need to go back in and fill these gaps because we're using an odd number of holes. Um, that's going to be easy to do because you'll notice that this one, we have the bottom and then the next step up, but that's kind of where we're missing over here. So um, all you have to do is basically, you're gonna kind of go weave it in and up. So we're just gonna go straight up to this next hole. This is where you might start to have a little bit of trouble pulling your needle through. Um, if that's the case, then what I would recommend, I'll show you on this next hole, so now I'm just flipping it over to the back. You can see I've got all of these sewn up. I've got to go here. So I'm just going to show you, you can kind of take the tip of your needle and kind of work your way in. And then also if the head of the needle, the eye of the needle gets hard to get through, you can wiggle that slowly as well. Okay, so now you just sew up through to the next hole straight up. And you can see now our front is completely stitched all the way down. And if we take it and flip it over, you can see our back is except for this one little gap here. And um, the way that I deal with this, it may not be exactly the right way, but this is how I close this gap and tie the knot easily. I stick the needle underneath this middle um, stitch or the sideways stitch. So then I have a tail coming off here and then we can let go of these. And so then I have um, a tail here. Let me cut some of this. I have a tail on either side of a string so you can see how that is. So I'm going to be tying my knot and it anchors to this string here. So I'm just going to do a regular square knot right over left and then left over right. Now, if this were a thicker book with maybe a bigger hole, if I was using a standard size hole punch, I could try to get that knot down into this last hole, but because it's a paperback, I am not going to attempt that. So what I like to do is trim my tails to, um, I like to have them about a half of an inch in length. That way I know stuff's not going to wiggle out. And then because this is waxed thread, I try to just smoosh it to the other one so that you can't really see the extra tails there. And then my binding is all done. Get this stuff out of the way. And this is what it looks like on the inside because we folded those pages. We have nice little covers on the inside and it's a fun little notebook. Uh, you could even use it like this. Maybe if you're a lefty, you would want 
notebook option like that. So I hope that you have enjoyed seeing this tutorial. I will be posting a tutorial. I, let me show you the other one. It's a little hard to see on this one. Um, this is called a hemp leaf binding, and that's going to be the next tutorial that I will share with you all. Um, let me show you the, the template for that one. So that's what it looks like when it's a lot easier to see. Um, that's why I'm doing a nice plain cover paper on that one. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed doing this one. If you try this binding out, please let me know in the comments what you think of it. Um, I love it. It's a great option for binding single sheets of paper. You can also do a hardcover version of that. And um, that's really interesting. It's definitely a little bit more work because you need to make kind of a hardcover piece here and then a hinge and then another hardcover. Um, but this is a really great one, um, especially if you're trying to teach maybe some younger kids how to do book binding. It's pretty straightforward. Once you do it a couple times, you really get the hang of it. So um, please let me know what you think of this binding and I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make it. Have a great day.